Praise the Lord. How are you? God is good. Welcome to our evening broadcast. I pray to God that he will grace us once more that we may know him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Thank you because you are Ebenezer. Yahweh. Sayali. Mekataya. Fiko Bahari Saliko Meni. Mahambu. Recommends take a LFS. Gidi fili subini hayamba. Rohom so proko doya lais. Beki taya limehuta. Abramanaya. Sketoya vilamina ya sukatai. Ramina Sulehi Ka Sahataya Kaya Rukomene Sulaminaya Bikons Dali Kuvelihi Zata Magaya Janjadila Havaya Sali Neminotaya Parasulehi Demingo Bara Tali Feto Kayala Inaya baka kuns. <laughs> Rekotaya milens. Seveli. Dugama na ya sule vreketu bahasilai. Anama na ya. Rukons teli vikoni la habaya. Mosilens. Gataka bara sulei parademe. Proponoyo la visa tai Menoya fidale Kopaya mesula Laminon stakapaya legime Aromeno bahalus Gito moro safali ya mekons dagaya Abramana sulaka badaya Open, open, open Velusa gabre Ilamana ya sulaha barata is Deko panto ko filada Ambre koni la fasulei Deke menaya sala paradali Ika samala ya kupens Aveli ya gabara satai Reminons kabara ya la parakuns Deli freko di maha sadai Open 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 May God buy a salad. Open. May God buy a salad. Open. May God buy a salad. Amen. Be still and know that I'm the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This I pray in the most holy name, the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good.
And you find me the scripture, the race is not for the swift. The race is not for the swift. When I was growing up, one of the things I desired was to know. I take great boast in knowing. I came to realize in school, those that knew education ruled over those that don't. In business, those that know business rule over those that don't. In medicine, those that know the language of medicine rule over those that don't. So I desired from a young child to know. Many years later I've come to realize God himself God himself locked everything about him in the same knowing. Like for example I see my doctor friend here in his level as a doctor, whichever realm of medical practitioner that he does, uh, let's assume a situation would happen and the healing ministry decides to heal through him. So based on the level of knowledge that he has pertaining a situation, he will rule over all of us. So I want to ask you a question. In terms of height, even without looking. Is, uh, is my doctor taller than me physically? Someone is saying, which doctor? Doctor, please stand. Are you taller than me physically? Handsome? Even if he is, you must... You Listen, the goal of surviving in this ministry is that you must know where to put your wisdom the chances of you not surviving here after the statement you want to make are very high. Even if he is more handsome than me, in this state now, John C.W. is the most handsome man in the whole world. That is the reality of the matter. I'm joking. In as much as I have certain heights, do you understand? Based on the question at hand, the answer, the one that has an answer, rules. Do you understand? Let's say we are, in a, we are in an ocean and the boat has capsized, but you are rich. You are rich. In fact, you are, what's the richest guy? Just currently, current, and line the word is, yeah, we, the fact that I'm alive is a clear indicator that um, that guy should enjoy for the shortest time period because uh, I've started doing some little goat business and I'm assuming that it should mount me up on business wings. So currently, who is rich in Africa? Who is the richest guy? Huh? Huh? And, and your prayer is that the Lord will... Ah, okay. No wonder. Who's the richest guy? Dangote. He's the richest currently. Brother, you must finish with the word currently. Say currently. <laughs> tomorrow. Don't talk about tomorrow because I've already, I've already registered the reality of the matter as far as tomorrow is concerned. So currently. 
in today, today, until today. No, 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 no. All types of wealth. Spiritual, divine, financial. So currently, brother, you must finish that statement. Say currently, then put the name. Who is the richest person? Currently? Uh -huh, wonderful. It's Dangote. So I want to ask you a question. Let's say Dangote does not know how to swim, but he's the richest. And then we are in the water and the boat is capsizing. Who will rule? And me, I know how to swim. Are you seeing the Superman? Are you seeing me standing on the boat? And then the Superman suit is there and say, Dangote, where art thou? Who will rule over the other? Huh? Why? Because? What do I know? Because even him, he knows how to make money. Huh? Your mouth has become heavy again. And they say, Dang God. But you don't know why. Why? I mean, who, who? He has money, but he doesn't know how to swim. Me, I don't have, but I know how to swim. And the situation is a capsizing boat. Who, who will rule over the other? The question is why? Huh? My ability to, where is you say, my mom? Now, my ability to know? So, it's not just to know, full stop. What we are looking for is a swimmer. It's not a knower. Because then he knows how to make money. But the current situation cannot be solved by money. It can only be solved by swimming. Are you hearing me? So in as much as I am the preacher of the day, depending on how the current situation looks, the reflection, the one that should reflect the answer is the one that can bring down the God of the day. And medically speaking, he will stand a better chance than me as far as a medical report is concerned. Do you understand that? And I know someone who's tried to be deep and say, but there is the healing ministry. Please just understand what I'm saying. I'm just trying to give a basic illustration. So it will not be on who is tall because the problem, we are not trying to solve tall. It's not the problem we are trying to solve. And so it might be you are here. You are, you are, you are, you are deploying the answer of tall, but the question is not who is tall. So even though you have an answer, it's not necessary. Because that is not the reflection of the problem of your day. Do you understand? You may see. Now, having said that, I desired to know. And I came to know something. The day you knew, you rule over the one that doesn't. So I decided I'm going to take my time and give my time to knowing. Not to a relationship. To knowing. Because if I can know... Everyone that is within my sphere of knowing. And I'm not just talking about reading. There's a difference between reading and knowing. Reading is what you deploy to know. Reading is not knowing. Do you understand? Reading is a strategy you deploy to know. But reading is not knowing. You can read and not know. Do you know you can hear and not understand? Do you know you can see and not perceive? I... They say they will, the Bible says they will be ever hearing. So hearing is not what I'm trying. It's not knowing by education. That's not the knowing I'm talking about. But at, at that particular time when I was in school, I desired to know. So my battle was against knowing. I had no competition but me. That's how you will notice one of the demons that I suppressed at a young age that Christians, many Christians today, 30 years in Christianity, they are still fighting is jealousy. I came to know no one is my opponent. <laughs> I have no opponent. I, my, my fight is with me. So I have no need to be jealous over you because I want to know more than what I knew. So what am I really up against? I'm up against my yesterday. It's not you. 
It's my yesterday. My yesterday becomes my bar. So I, I climb today based on my yesterday, not based on you. Do you people understand? So then there is no jealousy because I am the best of me. I'm not, the, I'm not trying to be the best of you. If I want to be the best of you, then I'll be jealous. You are not following me today. You are not following me. You have eaten too much mandas. Now, jealousy comes when I stop mounting up on my wings and I begin to look at your wings and how far they have taken you. Because I have wings. So my best, my worst is my yesterday. And my opposition, my opponent is my yesterday. It's not anyone on earth. Do you understand? That's why I don't have time. I've noticed this thing happens, especially in, in my... A lot of people are trying to compete with us. What? So you see someone, if I post something, someone... It, those are people that lack understanding of where they have been called. Because what you are really trying to be good at is your yesterday, not me. <laughs> because me, I have my own race. I have my own journey to take. And they look, we are all serving the same God as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, but the route to arriving there is totally different. Some of us who arrive by the water, God will need to teach you something by drowning in the water, then coming and saying, I lift you to stand on the water, come. Do you notice it was only Peter that was given that definition of faith? Why are you not following me? Do you understand? So how God taught men faith? There is no one else in the Bible that was given a chance to walk on water. It was only Peter. So you will be, that word faith is salvation. You, the way God will teach you the root of salvation, that salvation you have received, to someone else will be the water. He will put you in the water. To someone else, he will put you in the valley of the shadow of death. He will give you shadows of things. Shadows. Another person, you are not hearing me. Another person will be put with lions. You are not, are you? All that, remember, it's the same God. But the, the route to teaching you God is totally different. Believe me. Someone was taught by lions, putting, being put in the cage with lions. Another one was taught by walking on water. All that is to teach you faith. And that's why not everyone should teach you. My people, hear my words. It's not that every, everyone doesn't have a solution. The question is, is your solution our question? Yes, you have a solution. Like right now, I've, I've, I've eaten some crisps. So even if you come trying to give me food, I am full. It's not the question I'm asking. My question is not hunger. So you are giving me an answer of a question that is not even being asked. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need to understand how the system works. And God will bring us to faith. He will build us in faith using many roots, but arriving to the same kingdom. So Peter was taught faith by walking on water. He's the only disciple there that walked on water. Moses was taught faith by dividing the water. Those are two different things. So when it comes to teaching faith, Moses can only teach dividing faith, not walking faith. Peter will teach a faith that doesn't need anything to divide the water. Moses will teach faith that can divide the water. Either way, we are all going to be trained by the same God, but the training is totally people. Are you hearing me? Then it will come to um, Daniel. He will be taught the same faith by what? What happened to Daniel? Huh? He was put into the Notice, same faith, same God But different ways of learning Do you remember Joseph? Oh, he has come The grace to teach has come Have you seen Joseph? is still taught, being taught the same faith by the, by the same God Remember, there is no two types of faith in this kingdom Faith is faith There are levels of faith they are not types of faith, levels of faith. It's all CBC education in Kenya, 
but there is grade one grade two but it is cpc do you do you get and then there is gc now that one i can't spell it because that tells you the level that i managed if you notice someone saying that gc thing correctly he must have come from an elite realm but we that knew kcp that is the only education but it is all education do you that's how it works and that's why i discourage people from thinking that just because you have a word you have my word get the difference let me go slowly you have a word but you don't have my word you have a word from the lord but you don't have my word so it does not mean that that person is not going to end up to the same kingdom but i'm not called to be trained by you remember the training is what matters so daniel will teach you how to make lions your pet peter cannot but all of us are being trained by the same god and what is being trained is what faith but the perspectives through which god will teach you faith is totally different that's why my advice hear me hear me but follow him please don't go to the bible follow me as i follow christ that is for babes i want to believe you're not babes follow christ hear me but follow christ when you are a babe let's say you got born yesterday your view of jesus is not correct so then you follow me as you keep teaching the people you disappear john found it he said that i may decrease this is the realm of a people that have found jesus what happens in that reality as your pastor is decreasing not increasing if you notice your pastor is increasing it means you are decreasing you are not knowing but maybe i'm teaching then you can notice that you're able to say something and you in your heart you already picked another thing and then you're connecting it means you are now beginning not to need me it means heaven is nearing for cw so make sure you need me because a time will come you can build people the lord will tell you they no longer need you at such a realm jehovah will stretch his hand and say come up hither what i've said in tongues is that i will go going this is the reality of a man that reflects christ part of the baby standards is follow me those are babies so it means you need to follow and by the way you are here you might be a baby you say sema ai mimi nafuata yesu kutoka leo cw utajojui sitaikufuata that's not what i'm saying i'm trying to tell you as you keep growing in god your view of god increases more than your view of your pastor so when you hear that man what you see your perspective of god changes he can remain stagnant but what he's teaching you about god depends do you the reflection of how god will teach us faith is totally different so some of you here will be taught by being will be taught faith by the same god but being given a chance to dine with lions another one will be given faith to be taught faith by the same god by being given a chance to lose everything my people please hear me i know what i teach you <laughs> same god all of us are his people same god but the teaching the process of learning god is different someone who learn god as i've told you by being put into a lion's den so if god did not design you to learn god by a lion's den and you access a den you don't have the capacity to survive in that den it will kill you it means you have violated you didn't know god in the den another person who need to be taught god you're not uh, another person who be taught god by being sold by your very brothers all that he is teaching you faith same faith same god different roots when i knew this not everyone can teach me now <laughs> 
I understood why. I asked someone one simple question. Can I ask this class a question? You know you are a classroom. Can I ask you a question? Kindly. Will you answer me? The father in the Lord of some disciples is about to die. He's actually dead. His cousin, who is the king of kings now, hears about the death of his cousin in the flesh. And instead of going to save him, he allows the matter to end. He says that that is the time to begin the message. Okay? Now, this gentleman has disciples to the point through which the disciples that are following the king of kings, they come with a report and they decide that we are going to ask the Lord to teach us how to pray, looking not at Jesus, but as other people's disciples whose name was John the Baptist. He says, teach us how to pray just like John taught. So the reflection of the type of prayer they wanted was the reflection of John the Baptist's disciple. So it means the disciples of John already know how to Jesus, John has left the scene. He's dead. So it means those disciples are fatherless. You know? Which one was easier? To take tax collectors, robbers and liars, and many Judases. You know, in ministry, you see them a lot. Which one is easier? To take such people and begin to teach them how to pray or to, give, to go for what is already made. These are men that know how to pray. Why would Jesus do that? Because the training was apostolic. It was not praying. Jesus was not looking for prayer hub international. Jesus was looking for apostles. And as far as John the Baptist was concerned, he could not make apostles. But you see, prayer is part of what makes apostles. Jesus was not coming here to make prayerful men. Jesus came to make apostles. So what is being made there? apostles that's why he chose again and started because what was being made was what apostles <laughs> he wanted to pioneer a realm and you know when an apostle a true apostle is in a territory he doesn't even need to tell you he's an apostle oh part of the things that happens is an awakening True apostles don't go saying. They go showing. Yeah, it will be clear this man has the call of an apostle. In other words, he is able to establish doctrine in a state where there is total darkness. He can introduce light where there is darkness. That's what you call the mark of an apostolic. The apostle's mark. He can enter a realm. He can enter. He can stop Satan from misbehaving. Those are the marks of an apostle. It's not what we have today as names. You know? <laughs> no. There's no need for that. There's no need for that. What I'm trying to tell you is that knowing is what God is after. Knowing. My people, you keep hearing me emphasize on this name knowing. The day you will know what I mean, <laughs> you will be sorry for not knowing. The day you will know what I'm trying to push that they that know their God, it already has a limit. It's not they. It's not God. They that know. The limitation there is what? No. The after effect of knowing God is written. So then what is my quest in life? To know God. I have known God to such a level through which I have found that God blesses the work of that man's hands. I can tell you there is a knowing God that reflects on the work of your hands. There is a way you can know God. Your hands will tell us you have known God. Your hands. Knowing God. knowing and that is the greatest thing i value i want to know i will be disturbed by not knowing there are people that are not disturbed that they don't know it bothers them nothing that i post that i don't know what i'm saying the lord has to tell me something about it 
yesterday who i was seeking the lord a lot of fights were happening yesterday then he said prepare the day the wedding day is coming for my my ecclesia then i was in the spirit on that day i began looking so i looked for a little picture on our rem that can try and give us a link into what i saw because there is no possibility of linking it it's not even possible so i found a little picture i tried to edit it, it yeah. and the lord was just telling me oh my bride should prepare for that great day the day of the wedding and i saw how he sat on that table it he was far yet nigh i saw the kind of foods they served there i saw the plates people used to eat and when we tell you people eat there you think the way you are designed you are designed to eat that's why when jesus rose from the dead he ate fish he ate that new body ate you are designed to eat you are not an angel god did not design you to be bodiless even angels have food elijah ate how god taught elijah faith was to teach him how to reach to the kitchen of angels <laughs> all that is to teach you faith so what am i trying to tell you when you discover your journey the teacher will be available to teach you I found out something and I knew that from the time I was young the one that knows rules over those that don't financially speaking the one that knows will rule that's why he has a shop and he's a human being with two eyes and you do not have a shop and when that shop closes on Saturday morning you feel like destroying everyone you know why because that guy knows how to sell and you don't so he has ruled over so I made it my journey to know. I would read the Bible. I was 21. I would read the Bible for 19 hours seated. There are things I don't want to say so that it doesn't... Someone don't think if I don't read for... You know, even when you are giving testimonies, you must surround your testimony with wisdom. But I read like... Today, I'm, part of the things I'm doing, I'm eating from that reading. I'm eating now. That's why it's important to cast your seed it doesn't mean because you are praying and you are not seeing anything listen there are prayers now there are things that are happening to me that are not a reflection of them it will happen and i will know i didn't pray for it you might not understand me some things can happen to me martin now it is not because of any prayer i made now i will look back in my life and i notice i i thought i'm not sure i think i prayed this prayer nine years ago because part of the things with god is that angels brings prayer into his presence have you heard and the lord remembered and the lord remembered that's not because he doesn't know it means the day he decided to show up that is the context of remembrance it's not that he forgets he decides to show up so the reflection of english to tell to tell you that god has decided to show up is that god has remembered it's not that he forgets god does not have a memory loss That word your sins i will remember no more god has no memory loss it doesn't mean at the at the god does can search and say ay, ay, did you ever sin that's not what it means it means i will behave as though you never please my people when you read the bible be very careful with words this one i love this one i hate don't think that word the hate there is the hate you hate your neighbor it is the word disfavor i have decided not to favor this one but this one i favor But you see, when you read specific words without understanding, you just take it and begin to say, if God hates this, tell your neighbor, neighbor, you too can hate any man. It doesn't, no, no. There is no scripture that God hated Satan, the king of the abyss. No scripture. Including him, Jesus, it is written, oh, how you have fallen. That word, oh, it means he cried. Oh, it means it, it, it touched the heart of God. The falling of lucifer he was not somewhere saying go lucifer go lucy fall down fall down over there over there then over here no he was not happy which mother seeing his child falls claps his hand and glories 
but God is loving enough to give you a decision. Israel should not be ruled by a king. You want Saul, the first king of Israel? Okay, take him. He didn't want Israel to be ever ruled by any man. He desired to rule Israel himself. But because he did not hear. The one that knows will rule. Now, Jesus comes. He literates the same, literates the same word that we ignore. He says to you, it has been given to know. It means what God gives a man is not money. What God gives a man is knowing. What God gives a man is, you are not following me. What God gives a man is that you can know that such a thing exists. It's finished. The worst thing, that's why I don't want to know what God does not want. Do you remember even the tree in the, in God, in the Garden of Eden? What was the tree, what was the tree called? The tree of knowledge. The, my people, you don't understand. Believe me even when I'm teaching. You know, I look at your faces. Some of you think when I'm teaching here, I'm just caught up in the spirit. I look at your faces when I'm teaching. You are so foolish to ignore a man that knows something. You are so ignorant to ignore a man. You, you are, we are a foolish generation. Have you ever seen a foolish generation? A man has results standing in front of you to teach you. You are caught up in another realm thinking that you are deep. <laughs> Depth is by knowing. You can be caught up in the spiritual realm and you are seeing angels doing this and they are demons. Because you don't know how demons look. You think they are black with wings, black wings and have you have not met Lucifer very well. To know what beauty looks like and how light looks like and how he was called the, the morning star. You don't know that just because something is glittering, it doesn't mean it came from God. Don't wander in realms that you have not grown to. Hear the word of the Lord and build knowledge. That's how false prophets come because they begin to wander in power. They think that just because there is power, it is a proof that power came from God. You didn't read. And because we lack depth and insight into knowing God, knowing, when someone tries to teach you to know God, you call him boring. Because you like entertainment. I was telling her yesterday something happened and I was telling her no man on this planet can bring me down. No man. There is no man alive. Now, you can hear that and then you write on your social media. What's your name, sis? Betty. I, Betty, said, no. Before you finish writing, one man will appear. Then you will know it's not words we say. It is a state. It's a realm you get to. You know. It will take God to say, die. It will take God. It means you bow. You bow to Yahweh alone. No man, no man. Unless we finish, no man. If it was given to man, Eric, Eric, the way I know myself, the things I've met, including yesterday, I would not be alive here. The things I have seen. No man, there is no one. There is no one. That's why the Lord tells you, trust in the Lord. When you put your, when you know how to trust in the Lord, there is no sudden. There is nothing like sudden. Suddenly where? Where did it pass for you to be sudden? Yahweh knows everything. All things work together for good. I know. So there is no situation that I'll find myself and then I'll begin to click. God, where were you? I've never asked that question. God, where were you? Where were you? You, where were you when he was dying? When he was being pierced, where were you? In fact, you are the reason why he was pierced. If man was not created, God would never have died anywhere. We are the reason why God came to die for us. And we are so proud to ask God, where were you? Because you lost a job for 20,000. Where were you when he was hanging on the cross? All the pain he went through just to accommodate you. 
the one that knows will rule. Christians hear me, you miraculous generation. No sign shall be given you except the sign of Jonah. A miraculous generation. A generation that knows God by what God does. Yet the Bible is clear. The day that come to him must believe he is not he is doing he is there is a realm there are two types of christians those that know god for who he is and those that know god after what he has done those are two different christians now where do you think the biggest percentage of christians today is but your message can reflect you don't even need to be a genius to know the answer which type of christians do you think we have those that know their god or those that know what their god can do yes so you are now left with a doing god yet not a knowing god you can't know god one of the signs that you know god despite what you go through there is no option to cry because if i know look all things work together right all things he didn't say some things he didn't say godly things he said all things <laughs> sasa even bad things it is for my good in other words I am away. I'm out of Satan's control. He cannot do anything in his will, including Job. No matter how much you had, it was bad. He asked God for permission. It was God that decided that he's going to teach Job God to build his faith by what? Losing. So are you here and you have lost money? That's not a reason to leave God. Money. Money. Someone will say, Bishop, you don't. Are you sure you want to finish that statement of I don't understand? Are you sure? <laughs> you lose money and then you say, I'm going to quit God. Now, look, let's assume angels. Let's just for a second, be an angel for a second. And you are in heaven and you are a watcher. And then the guy you have been given room to watch for the next 70 years. On, he's 31 and this is how he's talking. At 31. It means that angel is a slave. He says, gosh, oh no. Replace this guy, God. Who is this? Because the angels come to your realm and say, what are you praying about? This is a prayer of a man that has not met God. Listen, the day you meet God, everything changes. Everything changes. Everything changes. How you pray, everything changes. <laughs> Every morning, after praying for everything I pray for, only God knows and what I've shared, I said, Lord, into your hands. I found an answer. I commit my life. Only you know. I don't need to worry. I have committed my life to the one that owns the day. He said, what can man do to me? It's a question that was asked in your Bible. What can man do? One time I was auctioned my car, one of my nice cars. And so they wanted to bring a tantrum in the estate. Remember those days. It was an estate. And so there were people, it was a Kalito apartment, and everyone came out to see my shame. So when I came out, they had a land cruiser. If you know what is... If you don't know, I pray you don't know. And everyone had come out because the man that was making noise in the upper room was going to be dissolved. I used to pray. There used to be a couple. I don't know if they can remember. They used to be on the next. So their, their balcony was looking my where I would stay. It was the fourth. So it was... Ah! It was where I was. Rooftop. Bre and Susa pra lugumeni batoya malasula breki vahali rooftop. Mimi English na kosanga. You might be good in English, but wait until we demonstrate. Mm. Keep your English and your Oxford. Nakamusi. I used to pray. Rakapa, ikata, 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 prakato, rakata, lakata. Ten. Two. So there used to be a couple because they, I, I believe their work was to look at me. They used to come out on the balcony. A couple. 
take a stool sit down and look I tell you the truth do you remember you remember they would sit at some points I would hear the husband say hey eh? <laughs> they would just watch and I would pray four five hours they would not they would just watch me So one day I decided to avert, to dodge that prayer realm and I would watch them from my room. I noticed they would still come out. It's like they were sad that that boy, if you call me that name, you will meet your maker. Are you even seeing him close? Say, that guy, man. Then I would go back and they would just come and sit and watch. And, if, and they had a baby. They would take that baby and put him on the lap, the mother, and watch this small man pray. And when I finished praying, they would take, to tell me that that's the reason, they would tell me, they would take their seat and go back to the house. So in case, one time they went back to the house and then I wanted to know if it is true. So I did, Riaka! they went back outside. They put the seat down. You needed to hear those tongues. Those are warring tongues. Where is she in the apple? Pele, Pele, Pele. <laughs> Pele is a footballer. You are calling a, a footballer. He was an, a Brazilian footballer and you think you are speaking in tongues. Pele, Pele, Pele. Pele, Pele. <laughs> where, where, I'm the, go and buy the shirt. Yes. Depending on the realm you are in. That's why you can start praying no more. Then before you know you are like a lion. Because what God has done, he has picked your spirit, showed your spirit what he is to pray for, then brought your spirit back to you. So you will notice, then at times you notice you are just, yes. That's why we don't even know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit gives us. So the utterance you are going to utter are based on the spirit you have met. So it is the work of the spirit to change your vocal cords. And you will know, up and invita. They that know. Jesus is not a teaching. Teaching reveal Jesus. He's not a teaching. Jesus is a knowing. When you know him, something changes about you. You know, that's how I survived for the years I've been to this city here in Keno. I've been called all name, devil worshipper, worshipper of devils. I now knew there was a difference. Devil worshipper and worshipper of devil, they are different. Everyone called me names. G what? I know my God. My God, it's not you that called me here. So there's nothing you can do to take me out of here. Stop wasting your time. People in this community have tried. Why is the church black? Build yours and make it yellow. I chose black because our generation thinks that black is dark. <laughs> There's a difference between darkness and black. You, you are black, so are we, is, is African Satanist. Why do you want us to use a color of building that we are not? We are not white, we are black, we are Africans. So uh, is every black an African? Let me look for who is. And in case I call you, just, just make your heart happy. I've seen several. But you know yourself. If you know you are black, God bless you. So does that mean if you see a black person, he's satanist? You know we are such a small... My generation, let us grow up. God is so large and we are settling for dust. No one has even started a journey of knowing God and we are arguing about Pele. Whether it's a type of tongue. You pray Pele, Pele, Pele. If God appears by Pele, Pele, that's your problem. God has appeared. You needed to have had that when I started speaking in tongues. Ku, ku. I would say ku for two hours. And that ku carried everything I wanted to say. But humanically, you are hearing ku. I see your ku. It's not a ku for the nation. My people, let us grow up. God is so big. God wants to be discovered. 
He wants to be discovered. God wants to be discovered. What an amazing thing. If you know God, then you will thank God because he wants to be discovered. You can't see God. Yet God in Christ decides to come. And you are still arguing. Jesus is the second person. So you is the third person of the Godhead. Let me show you who Jesus is. It's actually why I wanted to explain my little statement. Just tell your neighbor, can you know? Can you know God? Can you know? When you wake up in the morning, don't have an agenda. Just let your agenda forever that you may know him. This is the only prayer Jesus prayed. That you may know him. Epignosis. A deeper realm of knowing. Beyond reading. You read the Bible, but you know beyond. I don't know how to explain it. It's beyond reading. It's beyond, it's beyond praying. I tell you, it's beyond praying. It's unknowing. These things sponsor it, but it's not it. Let me ask you a question. Now that we will be with Jesus, what prayer will we be offering? If prayer means to ask, where we are going, wealth is common. It's called common wealth. So if prayer is asking, we will not need to ask anything. So then, what is the what will be prayer? Think about my question. What will be prayer? If prayer is asking, we are entering a realm where there is no asking. No one will be sick. No one will be lacking. So then, prayer is a knowing. It's not an asking. It's a knowing. And you will know when you hear a person praying, a person that has known. Even the prayers will tell you that man has known the Lord. How can you be brought for a situation? All your children are dead. Same day, businesses are dead. Everything dies. And then you turn and you say, the Lord give it. How do you explain that? If it was an African, you know now we hire people to cry on our behalf. Why? Then your auntie will cry there. Then you two of your uncles. And then hired goons that only wait for food and they stop crying when food is presented. You are crying that you have lost something. What about a man that has lost children? All his children. All his businesses. You have lost a business. Your children are still there. You are still there. Someone has lost everything. God is going to teach him by that realm. Don't pity him. It means he is large enough to accommodate that type of training. I repeat the statement. Whatever you go through, you are large enough to accommodate that type of training. There is someone else, what you are going through now, they can't bear it for two hours. They will die. Dead. I meet people coming and telling me, Bishop, I've not eaten for a day. <laughs> I remember now I did fasting dry. For no need, no need. No need. And then someone is coming and say, Ata tu jakula, siku ya muisho tu likula ni lea subui. But the last day we ate is today in the morning. And so we are supposed to cry. <laughs> those that know will rule over those that don't. Revelation. There is a secret one I found. When you now know that, even the songs you sing have understanding. I know something. Look, I thank God for healing. But you know something. I know God beyond this world. That is the only man that can say to live. Now, how do I teach you? To live is Christ. The man has found life in living and the man has found life in dying. How do you explain that? To live is Christ. To die is a gain. What, what, has that, what is that man saying? Eric. <laughs> I thank God for healing. Huh? 
let me explain something even the sickness cannot stop my eternity even the sickness so thank god for healing me whether you heal me or you don't what i found this life cannot threaten it so to live is christ if i'm gonna live blessed be the name of the lord i will live to preach his gospel that's what it means christ i'll talk about the hope of his salvation and if i die to live is not a gain so when god gives you life it is to preach him it's not because it's a gain so the fact that you have 70 years and one has 20 it doesn't mean you have gained anything by being alive what god is saying is that to prove the beauty of being alive is that it is me you are alive for that when you wake up in the morning it's me it's me you are alive for and in case i decide come that is the ge greatest gain forget the company you're waiting to build forget it it says the gain at his death is a gain how do you explain that where has that man gotten to and for me my generation here to gain is the contract you're waiting for if right now i ask prayer point you will notice it has everything to do with money yet someone is saying there is something you can gain if any man lives for christ and such a man dies have you read the scripture precious in the sight of god precious the word is precious it's not the fattening of a bank account mm -mm. it's not gold and silver he mm -mm. it says precious in the sight of god is the death of his saints because it's a gain but look at today you know why it's not a gain because the ones that are dying we are not sure where they are going that's why we mourn like those that have no hope because we are not sure my people when you know god you know everything when you don't know god you know nothing you can be the greatest marathoner you run even you outrun what you ran for you 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 ran you broke the record then you ran and broke your own record huh? <laughs> we have been called to gain our end is a gain child of god hear me your end is a gain we have been called to gain we, we will exit by gaining while the ones that have rejected jesus they will exit by losing revelation 22 having said that we will need to daily desire to know him what is a sign that you have known him you stop knowing yourself All your focus is him. You, fa you forget you. He says that I may decrease. You forget you. You are decreasing every day. You are knowing God. You are not knowing you. Ah, I know what your gospel looks like, my generation. Tell your neighbor, trust in yourself. Okay. When you are done with motivation, when you are done with motivating your life, when you are done, you will need to look at people that trusted in themselves take a pen and a paper and be intelligent enough to see better the end of the matter look at the end of trusting in yourself look at how it ended look at the end of trusting in self then if you notice you don't want that end uh, go back and now find the real one to trust he says trust in the lord <laughs> forget self in fact the proof that you're trusting in the lord you are no longer leaning to what you know it's not I, I the, oh no that's why i told you that knowing is not what you have just learned it is deeper it is given you can't even learn it god gives it to you to know to you it has been given this knowing comes like this it's not opened it's not a school you go to god gives you he says i give you to know me i want you to know me now if this giving has not come if this giving even if you take the bible no wonder you have muslims you have hindus people you know those people shock me they have three million plus gods can you imagine when will you ever finish you have 70 years in this life let's say per god you need one year 
you at least you'd have done 70 gods. They have 3 million plus gods. Mungina na mikonotano. Mungina ni ngombe. Sasa, let me just ask you. When will you, how many years will you need to know 3 million gods? The reason why they will be ever hearing. You know why? It is not given. You are not following me. It's not something you decide. I'm going to know. You can't decide. You can't decide. Forget it. Jehovah must call you to know him. <laughs> you can't wake up and say, I want to. You want to know him as who? Who are you? You are nothing. I'm nothing. We want to know him as who? Who is God for you to think you can know him? God desires to bring you into his presence. That is where it begins. That's why he says, before you are formed in your mother's womb, I, so if you are not chosen, forget about preaching to those people. Those of you evangelists that think you just take the microphone and just preach to anyone. No, no, no. He says, ye are of your father the devil. The source of your life. The source of your life. Is that I am not aware of you. And just that you can know it's true, remember there was another creature that came on this earth whose source was not God. God didn't create them. They are called the Nephilims. I had that Russia. Make sure I say the right thing. Is it true? Huh? They released. Did you say it before? I said, you know, it's going to be public. Huh? Something, I think it's Russia. They released a type of how Nephilims looked. You will know why God killed them. Go and check. <laughs> so it means another breed can come out that God did not pioneer. So just don't be ignorant. And as much as, oh, now I see it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, so God dealt with the physical part of them. Satan still engineered the spiritual part. So they were looking like us, but they were not of us. I speak to you in parables. You know the Nephilim was easy to identify. All you needed to do is to look for something large and eating things. Now how do you identify for something looking like you, eating like you? It is the hardest way. It is easier to identify a Nephilim than a Satanist. Because a Nephilim, his, his structure will sell him. You're not following. You know, I will only make some statements and I pass. Me, I will pass. If you pick it, it's up to you. Jesus now comes and he says, oh, don't look for the Nephilims. They are here. Now they look like you. But they are of your father, the devil. Satan pioneered them. So now Satan put spirits in men. He no longer raises Nephilims. He raises men and puts his spirit. So they are moving Satanists. They have no part in the redemption plan. Jesus says, only my sheep know my voice. If you are not mine, you can't know me. You are not designed. It is given to you. That desire you now have, you notice you left your house. It is given. Don't ever at any one point be proud. Thinking that you desired. You didn't desire anything. That desire was given to you by God for you to desire. That's who you are with. My sheep know my voice. And he said, and I know them. <laughs> We are not, not all of us belong to God. And just like in the days then of the Nephilims, it was clear that they did not belong to God. So is it in our day that those that have camouflaged wolves in sheepskin, Yahweh says this about you. He does not know you. But he says a statement to the righteous. Those that have been called into his everlasting light, not by works, lest any man should boast. Those who have, have accepted the call of his grace, the message of his salvation. Being Jesus Christ, such a one, say to the righteous, it shall be well. Revelation. Baharosa Lapina. Revelation 22, 11. He who is unjust, let him be unjust. Who is filthy, let him be filthy. He who is righteous, let him be righteous. Still, he who is holy, let him be 
holy. I showed you how to read the Bible. Do you remember the first verse I told them? Huh? When I told you to open today the first verse, it was which one? Huh? Now we are coming. Hold there. I will see if I will teach it today. I saw four things and I don't want to insist on them. It will take me out. Now, I want you to see something. I taught you how to read the Bible. Meanwhile, not I, but Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit. Through his little, little messenger, little toilet cleaner, little messenger. He said, he who is unjust, I want you to, listen, I want you to learn how to read the Bible. Don't just run. Look at the pattern the Bible is trying to bring. Because here, I'm already seeing a womb. There are two wombs here. He says, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be what? Filthy. Now let me explain. You will need the Holy Spirit to understand, to see things deeply. The womb there is unjust. When you play with unjust, 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 what you end up is filthy. No, you are not following. And the proof is not shouting. It's not that you're not shouting that you're not falling. No, I have a reason. You can be as quiet. I can throw something down and hear it. It doesn't mean I know what I'm saying. I'm trying to talk to your heart. When you begin, how does the matter begin? Unjust. When you journey with unjust, when you're not just, you journey with it for, for years, what you will end up as is a filthy being. So what does unjust give birth to? Filthiness. You are filthy. It means you no longer have parameters. You no longer have walls to govern your decisions. You, 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 you begin to deal. You are unjust. You are unjust. Then you will end up as a filthy person. Have you seen it? Now, that is the first womb. So, unjust. But what? Filthiness. Now, look at the second womb. This is just one person. Unjust and filth is one person. He says, he who is righteous. Now, how are you born again? Is it by works? Lest any man should boast? What is the gift? Ye are righteous. Is that true? So the day you became born again, what God gave you is justice. He made you righteous by justifying you. Do you understand that? When you begin to deal with righteousness, righteousness is not the biggest issue. What righteousness bats is holiness. So you cannot talk about holiness, no matter how much you preach holy, without making people receive the free gift called what? Righteousness. Do you notice that's what made God tell the woman, go and sin? That is a state of holiness, but it came after righteousness. Neither do I condemn you. What does that mean? This day, you're not following me. I have made you righteous. It begins with righteousness. The kingdom call begins with righteousness. Once you deal with righteousness, you will end up in holiness. That's why holiness, it says be. Holiness is a state of a being. You be. Righteousness is what you receive. Holiness is what you express. You don't receive holiness. You express holiness. You receive righteousness. So when you, a man is righteous, what that righteousness does is that it builds holiness in that man. So righteousness is like the kindergarten. Holiness is the university. Do you understand? That's why God says, the end of this matter, he says, be ye holy. Just as I am holy. You see? So what is the end state of God? What can you say is all of God? Holiness. Now, that word holiness... It's not, that, it's not about one that doesn't sin. Those are realms of holiness. Holiness is the state of his being. And what shocks me is that he has called you to be like him. Think about what I've told you. Assuming, very big assumption, I'm an antelope. My people, my people, my people, please hear when I teach you. I beseech you by the mercies of God. How I pray you see my heart. Please hear what we teach. 
the enemy cometh and now is I'm an antelope I come to you I tell you be ye antelope just like I am antelope stop what I've told you okay suffer for your mother apana hata yeye pia kuna hapa mti yote yako juu wewe amuka mama kuna hiyo she is a servant and she knows it funga hii leso venye wa mama wanafunganga what a, if you listen to this illustration will explain what is holy it's not what you think believe me now my sister wa <laughs> zion my son is called zion so you ni wa zion now i come to you there is what i am oh my, my people will you hear the gospel there is what i am what am i what did i say i am oh okay so you think so all this time you just think i'm a jumping jumping guy you look at your pastor and you abuse your pastor and antelope father look at all they have called your servant you mean all of you you see me as an antelope and you have said it collected by the way i've hurt my feelings uh, I am an antelope. So what am I? I am an antelope. This is the state of my being. Forget behaving. Those are forget I will bless you. Those are behaviors of what God is. There is who God is. What I am is an antelope. Forget the fact that I can jump. What I am without jumping I am I am an antelope. These are abilities of an antelope. They are not an antelope. I am an antelope. So the fact that I'm an antelope, my ability is to jump, but my ability is not me. The fact that God blessed you, blessing is not God. It's what God can do. Who God is is totally different. Why don't you see Why do you refuse to hear the word of the Lord? If not your kind. So which kind will tell you about God? You wait for an angel? How be it many have dined with them and they are not aware. You wait for wings so that you can believe. <laughs> I am already an antelope. So I come to you and I say be ye holy now holiness in this state is defined by what is currently speaking do you understand so holiness is not a is not anything it's what is currently speaking and what is speaking is an antelope so what i've told you when i tell you be ye holy what i'm telling you be ye an antelope because holy now is defined by who is saying it and as far as who is saying it here is an antelope so what is holy? It's not for you to jump. It's for you to be. So what do I expect? How does an antelope work? That's why I told you. No, 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 no. You have to suffer. I don't know how to. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, the fact that you are walking this way, you have violated, uh, why don't you hear? You have violated holiness as far as the author is concerned because the author in this state is an antelope. So the proof that you're going to be holy now is you begin by the looks and you eventually behave, you finish by the character. So the look is no antelope walks on two. 
Ah ah, ukuja tu usimind. Mgongo iko na shida. Hata hata hawa, hata si kila mtu mgongo wake iko na shida. So I I Yeah, yeah. Ah. Safa it to be so. Ah ah. Ana no 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 you 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 are your yeah your legs you you yeah that is now the day you received the day you received Jesus it begins by you looking like Jesus Jesus me he dali no kobo yo si faraha tua vezuli me he tali kubani fesa capra adumem podayala vilomensi sakupa ya ni manatele hepera ya sula benikuta ya rimenesia ratuka brata ya open I speak to you the mysteries of the kingdom. How be they no longer mysteries they are like an open book that Yahweh wants you to read. Just read the book. It's open to all those that profess his name. All that you may know him. So you begin by looking like an antelope. Where camera? It's not me. Ndio huyu ikuwe kwa record. Mm, I've been looking for this moment. Twende. Now, God, God can never call you where he is first not. Had I, if only I had the ability, but you see I'm the senior. So it, God, if, if, if this is how you look, and this is how God looks, God has violated his own principle. Because remember, he is what he's calling you to be. Can I repeat the statement? God is what he's calling you to be. So God is the first example of what he's calling us to be. So when he says be ye holy, God is not going to learn holiness with you. God is what he's calling you to be. So because now, now the one that is this defining holiness is an antelope, I cannot be this way. Before she went on her knees, she found me on my knees. Yeah. You know, light shines bright in my heart. I can say this with all humility. I need a lot, yet I need nothing. Light has found me. You know, when, when, when Caleb said that on Sunday, I call him spy. He says, light found me. I understood what he was saying. Because he didn't say money found me. He, didn't, he just said, and that is the errand of my message. Light found me. When that light finds you, it begins to shine. You begin to see all the things that God designed you to be that have been in you all this time. He just reveals them one by one. Light. He says the entrance of the word bringeth forth light to the simple. What does it mean simple? The bastards. You know, we are not in the realm of God. So we are called simple. Because only God is in his own class. There is no opposite of God. You cannot be opposite. It means you have to be on his class for you to be opposite. God is creator. Nothing is opposite. Everything else is creation. So how can you be opposite? <laughs> nothing is opposite. And that's why because there is nothing opposite, there is no challenger. <laughs> Satan is not a worthy challenger. All God needed to do was to deploy one. By the way, God did not deploy all chief rulers. He says, Michael, one, Michael and his angels, one of the chief princes. He deployed one chief prince and dealt with Lucifer. There is no challenger. Forget these people that said all oh, the things of Jesus is not God. Forget all this religion. There is no challenger. You don't need to accept it. Wait till we see it. 
There is no one that can challenge Yahweh. There will never be. There will never be. Forget Allah, forget Buddha. There will never be any challenger. God will crash with his righteous right hand. There is no one that can challenge his power. No one. All hell can rise. You can serve Satan for all we care. But when that day comes, he's coming on a chariot. There is no one that can challenge God. There has never been. Jesus beheld it. He says, the much I did, I beheld Satan fall. He never was involved in his falling. He just beheld it. God is not here to fight anyone. God is here to crash. Forget this mentality of cartoon. God will be here and Satan will be here. Doing what? Read your Bible. It says, my word, from my word will proceed. My, my word. What will destroy Satan is the word of the Lord. That will be Jesus Christ standing. His presence alone. Presence. His light alone deals with any form of darkness. He doesn't need to do anything. Before God calls you. Notice where I am. He already is where he's calling. There also shall my servant be. So God can never call you to be this way. You want to talk about a servant? He's number one servant. He's number one. So Jesus is already that thing. He's already it. So you are learning what he's already doing. So he'll tell you, put your leg in front. Next leg. Next leg. He is not learning with you. So you, you will notice you are losing ground. He is walking as he knows everything. Because what is being defined now is holiness as par antelope. So, after this teaching, Nikukose uko binguni. Nikukose. Tutaonana na wewe. Tuende. Tuende. So, God is already where he is calling you. Because holiness then is defined by an antelope. So it means you have to have a tail. Do you understand? Have you understood that part? Hmm. So now. Let me show you something. So now, there is what God is. What God is. He says, be ye holy. So the person here that needs to be is who? Answer me. Who needs to be? God. God. God is. You are not. So he comes to you. Who is holy? Who defines holy? So, six judges legalizing LGBTQT, same-sex marriage, forget yourselves, na my degrees in you, and then you know, how can you have such degrees and you don't know how a female looks like? With all your degrees, you don't know how a female looks like. Fallopian tubes. You don't know how a female looks like. With all your degrees, you are bragging with degrees that cannot even tell you the least which is male and female. And you are talking about degrees here. You cannot define holiness because you never are. Only God is. So the one that is, he comes to you. So this is man and this is Yahweh. He says, man. Man. No, say yes, Yahweh. Where is it? By the way, <laughs> so if I call you man, you call me what I am. So, what am I? Yahweh, man, Yahweh, Mr. Maraca, Kabla microphone. Oh, man, Yahweh. Yahweh. Man. Yahweh. Man. 
So who defines man? It's who called him out. And it's not a judge seated with 59 degrees. It's only the one that called you into existence that has the legal right to define you. And only God he says man so if anything that's not man if you decide this is going to be man if you decide this is going to be man <laughs> you will need to stand where God stood to create for you to call what you want man do you? <laughs> and the last time I checked, that's why God is clear. In the beginning, God forget every other thing. So if everything comes from him, he is the only one that has the legal right to define anything. So you people that only have Harvard campus, university, Nairobi University, all of you come together and then you think the only thing you have is Two million, ten billion, and now you think you are rich. He says, if you bring a thousand hills together, a, a thousand hills, let's not even go to ten thousand because at least he's talking about Rwanda only. You know, they call it the land of a thousand hills. So he's only talking about Rwanda. Let's not just talk about a thousand hills. They are the cattle there, they are mine. Forget even Kenya. Let's not let's just deal with a thousand. The cattle there are mine. Now, let's do the example. Uh, how many cattle, by the way, you can Google, how many cattle are alive in Kenya? Like now. By the way, let's Google, yeah. <laughs> Apart from who got pregnant, let's Google something that can help us. Who got pregnant, who died. Like I know people have Googled. How many cattle are alive? How many cattle does Kenya have? Just say that. I don't want to say elephants. How many cattle does Kenya have? How many? Are you busy doing anything? How many cattle? Google has to have an idea. Unless you don't have the ability to Google. In Jesus' name, may you Google. How many cattle does Kenya have? 21. 21.7 million heads of cattle. Huh? In 2020. And the way, let's take the way people are multiplying. How many months does a cow need to give birth? Nine. So it's the multiplication of humans. So in 2020, what were humans? And in 2020, that's how you know the rate of production of cows. Because if humans can produce the way we produce, I wish we can produce the word of God in our hearts. The way we produce was Chanoako 17 and they are now proud carrying children. 17 years old, you should be beaten. Those days you used to be pregnant and hide. Uko, kwa matawi. Now, they come out this way. And they even go to church. Now, let me ask you a question. And you are 17, 16. 20, let's assume they are 20, what? 22 million, right? Now, let's assume, and these are mature, we are talking about mature cows. Let's assume a cow, because I'm into that line from yesterday. Uh, according to the knowledge I've acquired from yesterday till now, it's a lot of knowledge, 24 hour knowledge. Let's assume a cow is $600. Let's assume. Now, do 21 million. No time, six hundred dollars. That's dollars. Change six hundred dollars into shillings. Let's say seventy thousand. A fully mature, which is not even. It's much more. Seventy thousand times twenty-one million. Take one zero. Take one zero. Two hundred and ten million. Take another zero. Two billion one hundred million. Sindio. Take another zero. Twenty-one billion. Najua, Najua. Don't worry. Take another zero, 200 and 
It's over 250 billion. Sindio? Calculator is machine. Don't worry. We, we are trying. It's around 200 and something billion. Is that true? Is that true? Hmm? 147 what? Billion. 147 billion. What God is telling you, if we just take your nation, now do that times Africa. Do, just do that times 52. Do that times 52. He says he owns cattle. And that's a metaphor because to just begin to explain what cattle is and he is. I'm just trying to bring the little. Who is that God? And then now you, you come with the fact that you have what God has as cattle. You are richest people. God only sees them as cattle owners. He will be worth 150 billion. How many people in Kenya are worth 150 billion? He says, you now have 10 million, 10 million, 10. And then you are now a big boy. You are going for weddings and splashing money. 10 million. And the one that has the whole world hides resources. Gold is not everywhere. And I feature. Now you, you have a salary of 100,000. One, we can't sleep. When you are paid, all neighbors will know you have been paid 20,000. God has everything. Yet you notice he hides. So I, I pity my generation that. And then you know what they will tell you? Look, I want to say it before. Because you don't like rebukes. In our jewel, you get a, a little, a little vit. You post it. Look how far we have come. Vit. Where, where, where is far? You get a little Mercedes. You are not the hope of your generation. And you know when you say this, someone won't hear what I'm saying because the God of this world has blinded. Part of the abilities of the God of this world is to offer blindness. So that everything we say, it is an insult. You can't see the word of God. If God owns everything and you don't see him boasting, he's still in heaven waiting for the time. You, you won't have it. And you're not on social media giving hope to a generation. I say, my people, don't worry. Your time will come. Time for what? What is the proof that we have found God? Can it be a car? God has everything and he doesn't boast. The air you have belongs to him. He can say, okay, Give me my air. He doesn't boast. With everything God owns, he's the most humble being ever. With the little you own, you are the most proudest being. I'm the most proudest being ever. Look at, the, look at that. God owns everything. He's the one to be as proud as possible. You own a nothing. Me, I own nothing. And we are the ones walking with a big chest. And you own nothing. Not the air, not the legs you walk. He defines holy. He tells you, man. Yahweh, Yahweh. It's important. Yahweh. Be holy. Yes, Yahweh. Just like I will be. No, I already am. Be like me. That's what holiness is. It's not a religious word. What he has told you, be like me. Even just put the word holy on the side because, you know, we, we tend to be, it's as, look at this statement. Be like me. Now, stop. Me that created you, I'm the one that knows you. Can I tell you to be like what you can never be? No, answer me. Is it possible? So the reason why there is hell is because what God has called us to be, you have decided you will not be. You notice that? So those of you that go preaching, hell is not true. Don't worry, don't worry. Even Satan doesn't believe it. Yeah, he's waiting for the lake of fire. He doesn't believe it. Don't worry, you're not the first one. Keep preaching that gospel. He says be holy. Now, if I tell you phone, call, and you refuse to call, and I'm the one that created you to call, what have you done? So what am I supposed to do? To create a realm where phones of your kind that disobey the order of calling and they want not to call will dwell. So what does that happen? So the factory has a room 
where they call the destroying room. You don't want to hear. Uh, so they create a factory. Uh, have you seen those machines that destroy cars? You see nice cars, but you see the car outside is beautiful. Have you ever seen it on social media? They are put in between this crusher. It has power to crash and make a, a big car a little box. Have you seen it? But when you look at the car outside, even you are saying, stop wasting money. They are not wasting money. That car has refused to follow the word of the brand. The brand, the one that gave it and called it BMW. The car decided to malfunction. Yet the owner gave it everything. Gave it an engine, gave it a gearbox. God gave you a heart, gave you a soul, gave you a mind, gave you resources, gave you life, gave you air, gave you good health, gave you children, gave you family. He gave you everything. All you needed to do is to follow his plan. You refuse it. So what does God do? He crushes you. Because you have malfunctioned. And what you have said is that you have called God a liar. That man cannot be holy. You have refused his word. So what does God do? He creates a realm for people that are unholy. He creates a realm for you. It's part of how he loves you. And he will throw you into that realm because that's where your kind are. Unholy. That's where your kind are. But to you that hear the word of the Lord, the Lord says, be ye holy. That is the condition. And then he says the reason. He says, I already am what I'm calling you. Ah, 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 ah. Be like me. <laughs> so what is holy David found what is holy I look up to the hills I look up to Jesus you are holy you are my holiness if I don't see you I can't see me if I don't know you I can't know me so I will need to consistently look at you to reflect you on me. That's what you call holy. Be like Jesus. Has someone offended you? He says, forgive. You are holy. Hey, if you turn, if you decide to take the matter and fight, what you have done is that you have violated holiness and because God is holy, holy will step out so that you can deal with it by yourself. Okay, go to court. Deal with the matter. When you are done, you will come to me. I decide that you turn the other cheek. Forgive. That's what you call holy. He's not crying and singing English songs. It is functioning like Yahweh. You are in a season of distress. The Lord says, be still and know that I. What you do, you have no one. You have no one to help you. All you reach out for is, Lord, I'm still. I, I just see you. If God is standing, I will stand. If God forgives, I will forgive. If God loves, I will love. Oh, those of you that love people because they are your children. You have not loved. Those are your children. You have not started the journey of love. That's not agape. That's not agape. Love, is there's a difference. Agape love. Oh, let me show you how to know you have agape love. It says, do good. Today they persecute you. That's, that's, that's holiness. You are reflecting God. And you know what happens when a man reflects God? God steps in for the man daily. God comes for that man. You think that that man is going to... No, it's not that he's any better. He is pleasing Yahweh. When God looks, he has a mirror in you. Can you make a prayer? Can you say, Lord, teach me to be your mirror. This is now holy. Teach me. Yeah. See yourself when you see me. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, besala pita kalo, fisu Filipe nudi kabindo ba sila kambi, fatuma na yala kompe, taki veseli duki primi tu taivasa. God is calling us to reflect Him. Nothing more. This is the call. That's why he begins by righteousness, a gift. Then it ends by holiness, a reflection. Few men 
men can reflect God? Few men. Have you ever had 150 billion? Have you ever had it? If now you are proud and you have nothing, what will happen when you take cows in one nation? What 150 billion? And you still are reflecting God. Do you remember the last time he gave you money and what you did? God owns everything. He says heaven is mine. That you may know that I rule in the affairs of men. Yet you see his humility. You, you have little money and pride. It means you are not holy. You have decided to live by another system. So the God of that system will come for you. You are being called to be like God. It's not many things. It's not English. So how can you be like what you have not looked up to? That's why there is a curse. Because you are not designed in the image of any. He says, let us make man in my image. In our image. So if man will continually reflect his image, he must know the image. That you may know him. You cannot be what you first do not know. So what is the call of our message? That you may know him. Because God wants you to reflect him. And the journey of reflecting begins by knowing who you will later reflect. They that know their God will reflect their God. I know when you hear that word, you hear raising the dead. It's not wrong, it's part of it. I know you hear casting out devils. It's not wrong, it's part of it. But let me tell you something deeper about reflecting God. He's loving those that don't love you. He's giving those that don't give you. Is helping those that don't help you. Do not forget it. And as much as God will use you for mighty crusades, what is the point of gaining everything and you lose the very thing that God gave you for eternity? We forget to love people. We forget to forgive people. That is the true reflection of a man. God is love. God is love. There are little things that are happening in my life that are shocking me. Let me give you a little testimony and then we pray again. Maybe someone that doesn't see things in the spirit. Let me tell you, when you get to know God, you, everything serves God. Please hear me. Everything serves God. Please hear my testimony. Hear my testimony. I was, we, we have just opened our little place, our little butchery there. And so the, the neighbors, our neighbors are our cousins from the other side, our Muslim cousins. Or friends for lack of a better word and so there is this guy the manager I met him a month ago I had come we had just opened like a month and something ago less than two months ago we opened our little barber shop we have employed people in the church and so I met the barber shop has like four people and so I was coming in and I met him he was going out he was about to pay I didn't know him he didn't know me he was about to make a payment and so he took out his phone and he wanted to, to pay. And I looked at him. And the Lord told me, preach me. What better way to preach him? Because someone here will think and go religiously. What manner of love? What is the depth of the manner of love? It's not words. It's a life. For God so loved the world that he gave. So the depth of love has something to do with a giving not a saying the evangelist today is busy saying and not giving his life and so i looked at him and i told him excuse me sir you have been pardoned you needed to see how i look because it's this thing that makes me clean me i'm a very terrible guy if you see me with slippers there you can even look down on me so i looked at him and i told him sir your debt is cancelled i was speaking to him a kingdom language i just told him your debt is cancelled 
He looked at me, he couldn't believe it. Then I had him ask someone that is working for me. And I told them, any man that asks you, do not say I'm the owner. It doesn't matter here. We, God owns everything. That's as far as I'm concerned. I'm just a steward. So he says, who is this person? Ben told him, do whatever that man tells you. Do you remember Mary? Huh? He says, whatever he tells you, do it. So the man came to me. He looked at me. He says, why would you pay for me? Now a question is asked. So what is the answer? Because I want you to come again, bro. Let's build a business. No. Jesus loves you. He looked at me. I could notice he was. But the giving secured my words. I speak to you in parables. Some of you, you have, you have words and you, have, you don't have a life. You don't, nothing is backing your word. Oh, do you remember with Jesus? He went with them. As they spoke, he confirmed it. In other words, he gave what they were saying. If Peter would say, save and God, I have none. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. The giving God that gives legs enters there. He said, hey, you have been told to wake up. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, so that his name will not be shamed, you will rise up. It has nothing to do with your belief there. The one that God has honored is Peter. He says, such as I have. So the one that God is honoring is the one that has it. And at that point, the one that has it has said, give him. So what God will do, he will give the one that has been told because of the one that has it. But you see, today we don't have it. That's why we can't give it. We don't have love. If you notice you are struggling to love, it's because you don't have it. You can never reflect what you are not. I told him Jesus loves him. I thought it had just gone like that. Then I noticed a week later, he would just smile. And those of you that know, have seen him, will know that I say the truth. He would desire to just smile. He never asked me anything about Jesus, but that giving reflected Jesus. He knew, and he would call me bishop. He knows I'm a bishop, for lack of a better word. But he calls me with such grace. The other day he came and he told me, Bishop, now that you're here, we are safe. <laughs> I say, Lord, what are you doing to me? I didn't preach anything. I just did one little thing. Ah. Some of you, God gives you an opportunity to give, but you decide to preach. Because religion has killed your mind. Religion. Because there is a way you have been told. So you have to take a microphone and shout. Why do you think no one is, be is hearing your word? And it's only the people you came to to announce the crusade that you left with. They, you know you are a team, so they are loyal to nothing and they don't know. So they came for you. They came with you to the crusade because it's Papa, Papa. And you left with the same people. No soul. Because you are misrepresenting God. Let me tell you, there is a, there is a way you can shout about Jesus that doesn't need your mouth. Huh? Oh, let me show you how we shout in this kingdom. You can forgive. You have shouted more than the one that is saying. You can love. You have shouted more than the one is saying. So today something weird happened. Mama here had come and I had come from buying some things. We, we are launching that. By the time we are done with those businesses, it's going to employ like almost 20 people. Can you imagine? And guess where they're coming from? And already the church has over around 20 people. There is 20 people. The farm. Can you imagine? Isn't that amazing? So today he met me. And you know when Satan, my people, especially women, because you doubt everything. You even doubt yourself. Men, be careful of women's advising you. Especially if they don't have a depth with Jesus. Be careful of the advice. Most of the advice from women is ungodly. And it has everything to do with fear. And what if we fail? What if we don't fail? Be very careful of those girlfriends. You go and ask, Babe, Are you on diaper? Babe, what do you think we should do? Kamuschana umekapata juzi and now you are asking ministry advice. Ministry advice. 
from a girlfriend. Ministry advice. You met a girl three months ago and you are going to a girl you met three months ago to talk about ministry. Ministry. You can clearly see she doesn't love giving and that's the person you want to ask whether you should give your clothes to someone. A person that doesn't give, you want them to tell you whether it's good to give. You must be very ignorant. I came there. Guess who I saw? I saw the same gentleman. He's, he's young, he's handsome. I saw him walking to me. I said, Lord, 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 in my heart, Father, I want to shine you. I want to shine you. What do I do? What do I do? He asked me a simple, he shouted one question. Are you sure? I said, yes, I want to shout you. He says, okay, prepare. I thought, stop. Thank God there was no protocol and Ben was very far. He came to me from all the reasons. He asked me something I knew. She is going to think about it now. He says, is this your car? I said, yes. Can you give me I go to Keno? Now, the intuition that comes there is bomb. <laughs> they are going to fix a camera. They are going to destroy. That is Satan. No, I'm saying the truth. Ah, yeah, and then now go. Because you don't like the truth. Even you, there is what you think when you think about a Christian. You just think prayer, prayer. We can run a nation. The same way you have thought wrong about us. We have dimensions where we have thought wrong because of people that have gone ahead of you. Not everyone is, is bad in those, in those people. No. Among them, there are those that belong to Jesus. You are not aware. That's why we are preaching. And in my era, I want there to be a record of more Muslims than any other religion. Me. I made it. I vowed. Guess what I'm doing? God told me yesterday. He told me to invite one sheikh into my service. We do come with Quran. I come with Bible. Those of you that think when you see Quran, you see a demon entering. I, and I want to do a round table. Just me and the sheikh. I thought about it yesterday. I said, put one sheikh and put John C. Put a Quran and I'll put a Bible. Let us talk about Jesus. He told me yesterday. So I have a, I have a studio. Na mutaona, nipatie two, three weeks. Nitaita shake. No fighting. Let's just talk. Have a cup of tea. Is it not those that sat in light or in darkness? Sat in darkness. Have seen a great light. We are going. We are coming. I want to announce my fellow brothers. Na huni mukutasa. Wasamoja. Kuna mubiri pale keno wa mesema ya kwamba. <laughs> it's not a challenge. It is a revelation. Jesus will be known. Not just by you, but by those that were not his. Are not his, but were his. So, please, if you are a sheikh. I want to invite you into my cup of tea. Consider it a cup of tea. Let's not fight. Let's just talk. We are brothers. Let the God that wins be worshipped. He says, evil too. Elijah didn't fight. He says, the one that shows up is, let him be God. Wakajikata, uko, wakajikata. Hakuna. Elijah, the time for Elijah came. After they cut them, Elijah says, stop now. Yahweh. If you are God, come down. We are going to put a third seat. The one that sits there. Those are where we are entering. Watch out English mingi. Nama lua, 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 lua. Tongues mingi. No. We want to speak in a language you can understand. Yahweh, let us take tea, the three of us. Whoever is God, come down. And I've posed a challenge. So if you are a sheikh, I want to pose a challenge. It is a good challenge. Please, let me invite you to Keno. We'll even give you transport and security back to your home. But as a transformed Christian, I guarantee you the only person that is going to change is you. Just come knowing you're not going back. You become an apostle. To kweke mafuta apo. The man came and told me, can I use your car? You know, that thing came in my mind. Oh, what if he wants to put a camera? Jesus shouted. He says, I thought you said you want to serve me. An opportunity to give has come. I gave him the key. 
The man went and he came back. He gave the key. I saw his friends at a distance doing. All of them are from that lineage. Now you can imagine what the conversation was. Is it not louder than me telling you Jesus loves you? Yeah. Which one is louder? You know what he, are you the one that told me? He says, ah, we are, we are Shao Koka. <laughs> that is the trap. And you lay it by resources, you lay it by your life. Nothing belongs to you. So when God wants to use it, you know we didn't open a butchery to sell meat. That is a hub. If you can't come to us, we are coming to you. Oh, you think I'm a businessman? You go and be a businessman. I'm a man of God. And can you not be a man of God as a businessman? Of course you can. Of course you can. Of course you can. You can be a man of God as anything. But I know the reason why God has called me. I'm not here to make money. I'm here to make men. Money is not my goal. So if I use money, believe me, the goal is men. I want men. So hapo, natafuta mutu anunulie TV, by the way. Please, we want to buy a 42 inch. Is it what? 30,000. I don't even know. Apo kwa butchery, we want to put the Bible. When you enter, forget even preaching. In the morning, early in the morning, shall I seek your face? And then we put audios. So there is no way of buying meat without hearing the word of God. There is no way. Don't buy. That is what I'm thinking. Yes. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. You just enter there. there. Can you imagine if that's the ambience? You'll be noticing people living. Then a, a whole mission begin there outside. Forget this building. Forget it. What is building? Revival is happening out of the four walls of the church. Forget this building. You think if I wake up and I notice this building has collapsed, I'll, it, I'll shake. You don't know me. You don't know me. The day God doesn't use me to win souls, that's the day I will die. I would rather die. There is nothing, there is nothing this world can do to me. I found him. I know the God that rules in the affairs of men. I have seen him. There is nothing. You can take all my money, ask her. You, there are things I can't tell you. There are things, there are battles I fought the last one year. You have no idea. You have no idea. A situation arose and God told me, can you deal with this situation? I had built a house for my family. The best house in this city, I can say it, was mine. In this city. Here, it is mine. The Lord came in the night and said, can you give me this house? <laughs> I didn't struggle. How can a product struggle with the manufacturer's guide? I say, Lord, when do you want it? I took my family, we went and rented. I say, Lord, take it. <laughs> there is a way you can live beyond this realm. If you have not found it, you will be guarded by money, by things. The day you meet him, nothing can satisfy. Nothing. You just want Jesus. Me not take a Guess what my goal is? My goal is salvation. Guess what I will use? Any tool available, including giving him. So he now came today. We had a meeting yesterday. Good meeting. He says, you know now, us, we only buy meat that is slaughtered by our people. You know that? So you think that is now a trap? Only to a fool. I looked at him and I asked the Lord, what do I tell him? He asked me, reverse the same question. The Lord asked me, ask him, where do you buy your petrol? I asked him, you needed to have seen me, now, and, and it's only leakage, and you might think I'm the wise one there. I said, where do I buy my petrol? All our church petrol. He looked at me. He says, do you know there are Christian, Christian petrol station? So if I think that way, who will you sell to? Do you know the guy looked at me and said, nunua nyama hapa? I tell you the truth. I will be buying meat here. Why? Just because. 
they are the first customer at the butcher. We found them there. Uh, when I brought meat. Yeah, they are the first people to buy there. And it is not sacrificed. I mean, it is not slaughtered by them. What does that mean? Wisdom, wisdom. Does anyone of you lack wisdom? You will win a nation by wisdom. You can save a nation. Forget a religion, a nation. I know what I'm going for there. In fact, I was telling them, manage it. I'm not here. I know what I'm going for. I don't even want anything from that place. Me, I want men. And the best way to be loud about the gospel is to give. You know, there is a lot of spiritual things. And even now, there is someone that is going to be against what I'm saying. You know, people are just, it just depends on the level you are. I'm, you just hear another pastor. Forget me. I'm just a little man in the village. Don't even hear me. Forget my wisdom. It's even nothing. I know why I came to this one. It is becoming clear by the day that there is nothing I own that cannot reflect Christ. I just want Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, oh, you want a car? For what reason? I want to carry people to the church. That one who earn you a car speedily, speedily. You know, with God, you must give the reason. God never gives anything without the reason. So don't think the day you became born again, now that is the reason. No, no, my people perish. My people, you are born again, but you are perishing because you lack understanding. Now, they are going to be buying meat because I challenge them. What if me, I said I'm going not to be buying petrol? You know why? Because we are bigger. Listen, sister, let's assume, some, not you, let me give this one. You, you, sister, let's assume you are a witch. And that morning, eh, you, you slaughtered 19 goats and then you did, he, 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 for 13 minutes. And then he, for 33 minutes. And then that demon told you, the first man you shake his hand, we will sacrifice him. Pray to God, it's not me. Because you will be the sacrifice, you are witch, so. No, Christianity today is a backing out ram. I can't visit my village because they are witches. Jesus visited a realm where there was only one man recorded in the Bible having a legion. A legion. He stepped into his realm. <laughs> what was legion? Came and bowed. And when I teach this, someone say, you are just saying that because in your home. Which of we were born with nine daughters according to the Kikuyu culture. So sometimes you see the things we are fighting, the spirits are rising and you can tell. You know, I knew it was going to happen. I wish, I wish, I wish our staff would be sensitive when I'm teaching. I wish you would know when to do things. Because that's what he does. Because he wants now to say, ah, time in Asia, watch our end. No problem. Let us... You see, my people, <laughs> behold, I am coming soon. That is the verse. Put it there for them. Let them go reading it. My, I am coming soon. It is not Muhammad that is coming. I'm so sorry. And meanwhile, I pray you do. How I pray you believe, but it doesn't matter what you believe. That coming is not tied to your believing. <laughs> so whether you believe in Jesus or you don't believe, the only person that is coming back, his name is Jesus Christ. You don't need to believe it. Let us live and see. You see, after the, this life, the only person, are you a Muslim? Believe me, you will not meet Allah. Believe me. You will not meet Muhammad. Are you a Hindu? You will not meet all those gods. Are you a Hare Krishna and all those? Things? You will not meet any of those gods. The only one standing at that entrance, he's called the gate of heaven. 
There is no one. You can give virgins, you can give, give four virgins, 72. You can do what you want. But I'm telling you when you die, because you're going to die, well, you don't need to like it. Only one option that you won't die is if Jesus appears, then you will be transformed. But in case he doesn't appear, we will leave this earth. Just know it. One person you will meet, I guarantee you. I Look, I guarantee you, you will meet Yahweh. Jesus Christ. Do what you want at the end of everything. Jesus left standing. Just, just stop what you're doing. Stop, stop lying to yourself. You don't even need to believe my message. You can call me all those things you call on social media. I do the matter to me. One person left standing. One being. One Lord and one God. And it is not Buddha, it is not Allah, it is not anyone, even you Christians, those gods you put on your rosaries, it is not him. With the sun on his head, it is not him. Even you, you don't know him. One being left standing he is called the king and his name is Jesus. Whether you like it or you don't like it, Jesus Christ the righteous. That's all I wanted to tell you. So now, know him. Know him. While you can, know him. Because in this life, what I love about God, you meet him in the beginning, but you are a babe, so you see the child smiling, you can't tell. And you will meet him at the end. Either way, you will meet him. Now this is the problem. There are those that will meet him on his side. And there are those that will meet him on the other side. You will meet him. We don't need to argue. Let us watch and see. This is a guarantee. And I put a challenge to any man that can guarantee that about your God. I challenge you. I challenge you now. Only Jesus came for people. The rest of them, your God is in heaven. How do you plan to reach there? If you can't go to the moon, Without an external help, how can you arrive to heaven without the God of that realm? Jews are still waiting for their king because he cannot come in a manger. Gentiles are even lost because the God of their salvation is mammon. Muslims would rather believe an account that just happened 570 to 600 years later. Than the account of true eyewitnesses. The four letters are eyewitnesses. God doesn't even need to appear to you. The fact that you can read eyewitness account. You ignore eyewitness account. Yet your Quran tells you that the book is true. That their Quran tells you to read the book. Then they are now saying the book has been blotted. I mean the book has been. Uh, so it means then. God's word can change. So you have violated your own book. Their book tells them to read our book. <laughs> Muhammad speaks about something 500, 600 years. He's not even there. After Jesus has gone, Matthew speaks about one he ate with. And let me ask you a question. Which account will you believe? Eyewitness or revelation witness? So how can Muhammad talk about Jesus? To that level and then you take his message to be who jesus is jesus christ is alive and i love one fact at the center of it all it's you that i see that's the center of everything when you are all said and done sorry for taking your time i know when to finish when all is said and done, at the center of it all, it's you that I see, Jesus. It's you that I see. Behold, I'm coming soon. 
He didn't say, behold, we are coming soon, me and all your gods. I, it is one. What to those of you that manipulate the doctrine of Christ? You will have your day. But to those of you that exalt his message. What is his message? An everlasting kingdom. How did it come? By a one that looks like a man. How God became man. Stop teaching three gods. How God became man. God wore a body to die for you. Which God can do that? At the end of everything. Jesus Christ. Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. And I'll give to every man according to what he has done. So then the question would be, what is this reward? So that you don't think his cars and houses, what is the reward? He didn't say my rewards. He is speaking about one reward, a reward, which is the most beautiful, the greatest thing God can give you. Can I show you? Can I show you? Romans 2, 6. This is the reward. This is the reward he's talking about. He says, God will give to each person. Have you noticed? Did you see where it comes from? Have you noticed it's a reflect? Have you seen now the reflection? Do you notice what we have read and this is the same? He says, God, who is giving? So now Revelation says, Behold he, behold I. Now, that word I, we all know who is coming. Who is that I? Jesus. Is that true? So, what does Romans call that same I? God. I know we have a hard time believing who is Jesus. He is the only God. The spirit in that body is God in himself. He says, God will give to each person according to what he has done. Keep going. Look at, look at it. What is that? What will God give? Good. Can you read it? No. No, no, no. Romans. To those... Can you read it? To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory now. So when you do good, what are you really seeking without you knowing? Please answer me. What are you really seeking? What are you really seeking? So when you do good, what you are reflecting is glory. So the, the other name for good is glory. So do good. In other words, glory more. Glory more. He says, honor and immortality he will give. He will give? He will give? So behold, I am coming. My reward. So what is that reward? Eternal. Now guess what? Guess what? Drum rolls, drum rolls, drum rolls. Only one can give it. Everyone can teach any doctrine you want to teach on this earth. Only one can give it. And that one is a true God. So you don't need to believe our message. I would pray who will believe our message. But in case you refuse, what I love about it is that in the spirit realm, only one can give eternal life. So we don't even need to argue. Let us wait. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality. So in doing good, what you are really seeking is glory, honor, and life beyond here. It means you have decided my life cannot be, cannot end here. What God will give you is eternal life. That is your reward. That is your reward. Eternal life. Can you close your eyes for a minute? Now, can you try to think what is eternal? In your own little way, in my own little way. Can you just imagine a space called eternal? I want you to find a way. I pray that Jesus will help you. Can you try to journey to eternal? <laughs> just try. Your own life, you know that one day you will leave earth. Now, I want you to imagine when you live here. There is a space called eternal. Please, my people, can you try? I just want to be like you. Oh, oh. 
Only you matter alone. Only you matter alone. Ask the Lord to help you. I just want to know your ways. Oh. Only you matter alone. Only you matter alone. To know you is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Is all I want. Know your way is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. To see your face is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Is all I want. To hear your voice is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. To spend eternity with you is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. Eternity with you, Lord, is all I want to do. Is all I want to do. I just want to see your face. Oh, only you matter, Lord. Only you matter, Lord. I just want to see how you will call me at the end of everything. I just want to see how you will dress me at the end of everything. At the end of everything. All I want is you at the end of everything. At the end of everything. At the end of everything, all I see is you. At the end of everything, at the end of everything, that is the reward God wants to give you. My people, what better than to know you are living beyond here? What better reward can God give you? What is eternal life? It's God himself. Eternal life is God himself. Can you imagine forever with the one you are desiring to meet? It's now forever. You see him. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you may know him. I know you know many things. Can you try knowing him? I know you have tried books. You have tried you, you just this time around. That I may know you. That I may know you. It is finished. Father, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Help my heart, Lord. Help our heart. Blessed be your name. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name. Every blessing. <laughs>